So I worked for maybe last uh, two years on this issue of uh, digital sufficiency. Uh, I published one book and uh, a, small, a small one, which is in French, <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, this is, I can say, a kind of summary of more main ideas of, uh, of my analysis, which uh, I want to share with you. So as David said, I'm a professor in uh, political and social philosophy, philosophy and also philosophy of science and techniques. I have a background in uh, engineering studies, engineering school. And I went to philosophy because I, I found that uh, engineering school is a bit uh, narrow-minded. But currently I'm working in in engineering school uh, institute, which is uh, institute Min Telecom, Mines and Telecommunication, which, which is uh, the biggest group of engineering school in France and one of the oldest because it's linked to, to uh, Polytechnic. Uh, you, you probably know the, the, the military, military engineering school in French, which, which is the, uh, the main engineering school. And uh, in the past, this school was linked to specialized schools, mines, roads, uh, later telecommunication, and it's, it's like a group of, 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 of schools with, at, at the top, Polytechnic. It's, it's French organization, typical French organization, which uh, don't exist uh, anywhere in the world. And I'm, on, I'm also uh, at the laboratory of uh, political and social change, which is in this university, just another building. So I'm... Uh, used to come, not very often, because uh, I uh, usually I'll, I uh, teach at Evry, which is in the south of Paris. So as you can see, I work on the issue for more than 15 years now, with the first work on uh, more, more on digital waste in 2004-05, with a book, 2000, 2006, and on uh, green ICT, in 2009, and more recently, a heavy book, 400 pages, the digital uh, um, um, sufficiency imperative, and this one, which is a kind of uh, uh, shortest version. So I will start to with uh, explaining which method I, I used. Then I go to some ecological stakes of digitalization come back to what means digitalization, then uh, have a look on what, what's digital sufficiency and the imperative of digital sufficiency, and a uh, final point on lifestyle, lifestyle issues, uh, which I understand as politics of networks or networks politics. You, my English is not so very good, so <laughs> I uh, apologize for uh, if, if something is not very clear. So first question of methods. My method, more generally speaking, is, uh, is like what uh, is called sometimes political theory, which you have a definition there, which involves the study of history of political so thought, as well as problems in contem contemporary political life that have a philosophical dimension, which is true for uh, f sufficiency. Uh, usually, politi political theory is linked to uh, the governance, government issues, sovereignty issue, not, not so much to science and technique issues, but of course, uh, as a, uh, a specialist of, as you say, the growth, sustainable development, and you have to link the, this to this kind of issues. Even if, if it's not linked, you have to do it. Uh, I want to underline also that uh, I'm, uh, um, uh, I try to underline also the, the power effects, domination effects, struggles uh, between um, actors. It's not uh, only a um, um, harmonic, harmonicist description, 
uh, the world is not uh, full of convergence in interests. So there are struggles between uh, toward different uh, goals, and I will uh, raise this issue afterwards. So in the specific case of uh, this study, I uh, borrowed a framework from uh, James C. Scott. Maybe you already know. You don't. Uh, you, you can have a look on this author, which is a uh, anthropologist. There are two books. One book is uh, Seeing Like a State, uh, with um, a, a concept which is uh, state schemes. It's seeing like a state. It's not. All, it's not only the state. The state who is seeing like a state is when we talk about uh, public policy, we use the vocabulary of the state. For example, digitalization means it. It refers some to some public policy, to uh, some public discourse, to some actors wh which are categorized in the statistics, in uh, 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 public nomenclature, and so, and, and so on. This first book and another book, which is the art, the arts of resistance, and he is uh, putting forward the concept of public text, and the public text is the, you can say, the symbolic aspect of this uh, uh, use of state schemes, and we use, uh, I will use also the concept of life, lifestyles borrowed to another author. I will uh, explain later. My method also is, is based on the bibliography, which is more very use, uh, common in, uh, in philosophy. We don't go so much on the field, what sociologists call the field. We can go, but usually we use the, the field of uh, the works of sociologists, uh, uh, political um, theorists, and so on. And I use a lot of great literature also, such as reports, Cisco reports, uh, Xerfi reports, uh, and so on. So some ecological stakes of digitalization of, or of the digital. Uh, first, remember, but I, I checked on your uh, different conference, you, you, you already uh, get that uh, climate change is not a small issue, so uh, <laughs> I go very fast. Just this is the map I showed to, the, to my uh, students. That in the worst uh, scenario, there could be uh, some peak of temperature at 55 degrees in France in, in less than 30 years, not, not 2100, 2050, which means that uh, for students, they, they, they will be at the same age as me in 30 years, uh, almost, and it could be. It's not impossible. This scenario is not impossible. So, as uh, you, you saw already with climate change, it's, there, are, there are uncertainties on, uh, you, know, you know how, may, how much CO2 you put in the atmosphere, but you don't really know how many degrees you get at the, at the end. It's the climate sensibility, but you get it on, in other, another course. So in this world, which is not, uh, not very good for, uh, uh, for the global uh, biosphere, the um, uh, digital uh, is, uh, is, has been uh, seen for uh, a few years as a, uh, as a problem. You can see here some statistics from Cisco, which is uh, here, Cisco Global Cloud Index, 2016-2021. More or less, it's the same period, 2016-2021. And this is the big data volumes. You see the, the increase, which is uh, very, very fast. You see there uh, the other uh, graph, uh, the growth of, of the IP traffic, uh, global IP traffic, exabytes per month, and also exabytes, uh, I think it's per month also. So it's growing very, very fast. And uh, you, you can see also the effect of uh, different types of uh, 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 radio transmission, 3G, 4G, 5G. The more you have of your, the, the more uh, uh, motorways for the, digi digital, the tra dra digital traffic you have, of course, the more digital traffic you have. It's uh, kind of evidence, but uh, <laughs> it's not so evident for, uh, 
for governments or and, uh, and other actors. Is this uh, one one argument is that okay this is increasing, that's right, but there is energy efficiency, and it's true. If you look at uh, what the energy you need to make uh, one information, a difference between zero and one with, uh, with energy, that's how the digital works, you need today 10 billion times, 10 billion times less energy than in 1945 with the first computer, which is the ENIAC. 10 billion times less, which is uh, a progress in energy efficiency you cannot find in uh, any other sector. <laughs> the, for the cars, uh, the cars, uh, they don't consume 10 billion times less than uh, the Ford T, for, for example. So many, many uh, actors in the digital sector say there is uh, e energy efficiency. It's, it's, it's true, but as, as uh, you, you saw, if you read the article I sent uh, I said to you already in the bibliography, it's not enough. And there is also some uh, absolute limits, which is the Landauer limit there. And this is uh, a study of the uh, uh, Semiconductor Research Corporation or Semiconductor Industry Association. So it's coming from the industry, it's not coming from uh, Greenpeace. And this, this uh, study shows the benchmark system, which is the average system, you can say, in 2015, 1,000 uh, times more energy efficiency is the blue line, uh, tire, blue line like this, and the Landauer limit is a, is a gray line. You see? If you increase all the time the digital use, digital traffic, and so on and so on, even if you have gains in efficiency, then it's it's always increased, but it's, it's increasing later. Slower and later, but it's, it's increasing. And uh, this study, which, which is very, uh, um, not, not very precise, uh, was warning, and it's coming from the industry, 2015, was warning that there will be a problem. So you see the title, Rebooting the IT Revolution, a call to action, which means the industry itself says, oh, be careful, don't use so much uh, uh, the, the digi digital technologies because there will be a big problem. And this is the first part of the, of the, um, of the debate, which is about uh, uh, green IT. And the, the other part of the debate, which you, you can find also in the, in the article I uh, sent you in already, is IT for green. So how to make IT greener? How to, uh, um, for, uh, the, it's a part of the debate, debate, and another part of the debate is to use IT for greening the other sectors. And I don't want to make all the history, but in 2007, uh, there was a first warning on, uh, on digital uh, energy consumption when uh, Gartner, which is the very big IT consultant, uh, calculates that uh, the IT sector, globally speaking, was uh, about 2% uh, of GHG global emissions, which, which was always the same uh, figure as uh, um, civil uh, aviation. Uh, in, in the small uh, world of IT, there was a kind of shock. Oh, so much. We thought that it's immaterial. It has consumed nothing. And that's not the case. And the, the IT sectors say, okay, yes, that's, it's polluting a little bit, but IT will decrease very fast the GHG emission of other sectors. That's the several studies. First one in 2008 from the Global E-Sustainability Initiative, which is a consortium of uh, uh, IT and industry. And they were calculating uh, in 2008, 2012, uh, 2015, the last, last one, Smarter 2030, was released in 2015. You see, first study, IT uh, can decrease five times it own, its own footprint in the other sectors. In the uh, 2012 report, 
seven times, and to, uh, 2015 Ripon, 10 times. Uh, of, co of course, this not, doesn't happen. It's, it's, it's uh, scenarios which, which, are, which we are not consistent. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I don't see if you worked on scenarios, how to make scenarios, but as you can say, uh, as you can imagine, it's possible to, to make a science, science fiction scenarios, you imagine what you want, uh, it has nothing to do with real world. And in these scenarios, they just imagine what, what people can do with uh, IT to decrease emission uh, without being consistent with what a society needs and without being consistent with what IT companies are doing themselves. And themselves, they are pushing a lot for IT consumption. And they are pushing a lot for more consumption in other sectors, thanks to IT. As you can see in the article again, I sent to you, which, which is this one, Lange, Paul, and Santarius, 2020. So, other sectors, uh, what, 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 is, uh, what are the solutions for other sectors? It's all about being smart, smart grid, smart cities, smart housing, and so on, and so on. Everything is for, for in the IT narrative, uh, economy is not smart. It's brown economy, but with IT, it will be very smart and it will be a dematerialized economy, theoretically. So th this is a very heavy industry discourse. You can find uh, already uh, today, the discourse is, is still there. Huh? It's, it's, not, uh, it's not gone. Some studies refine a little bit what's, what's, uh, what's going on with the traffic, what, what is, uh, are the uses uh, behind the, the numbers of, of the traffic. This is the, uh, an association, uh, a think tank, uh, which is called the Shift Project uh, in France. And they, they, f they found that uh, Vidio is a heavy contributor of, of the traffic, which is very uh, it's a kind of evidence because uh, videos, it's, it's big, uh, big files uh, to, to say, uh, to it's only big, big files. So the, the biggest the file is, the more traffic you generate when you, when you uh, send it from one point to another. That's, that's very uh, easy to understand. But I think the, we, we should care about that, of course. Uh, of, uh, on uh, video use. Uh, maybe you heard uh, that during the um, COVID uh, crisis, uh, there was an um, um, increase on uh, video use with Zoom and this kind of uh, video conference. And uh, Netflix decreased the um, resolution of, of the, the films they, 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 um, they, uh, in streaming on their platform to, to uh, uh, make room on the uh, on the internet on the infrastructure. You can see that there is a kind of uh, uh, over uh, encombrement, comme on dit, over uh, overload. overload. Yes, oh, thank you. Overload of, of the of the network. If you look, you look at the future, uh, the shift project try to tries to make some scenarios which were highly contested at the beginning in uh, 2018, but now uh, they are more or less uh, agreed by the, 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 the contestor, <laughs> especially the International Energy Agency, which was very, very optimistic about uh, digitalization. Now they, 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 they agree more or less that it's, it's, it's uh, realistic. So there are two, as I said already, there are two parameters. First, it's, it's the uses which generate traffic and uh, uh, um, compute, uh, computing, uh, traffic and computing, and uh, the energy efficiency gain of the, all, the, all the infrastructure, computers, but also uh, radio transmission and, uh, uh, and so on. So you have this. These scenarios, it's a bit uh, difficult to see, but if you look at on the, on the left, the, the scale 
you, uh, you see, even me, I have some trouble to see. You see, it's it's going from. Uh, ah, we oh, oh, my. Uh, no, this is not good. Ah, okay, here. Yeah. This is better. I see nothing here now, but uh, okay. This is four percent, five percent, six percent, seven percent. Digital energy consumption versus total energy consumption of the world. Four percent here. So we are more or less somewhere here. So if energy efficiency is not increasing as fast as in the past, then and, and if traffic is increasing at least as fast as in the past, then you have the red curve, which is 7%, 8%, 2025, uh, which is very close. So it's increasing very fast. Uh, I must say also that this, uh, this is not all the, the figure for the energy consumption. Half, more or less half of the energy consumption is about manufacturing uh, IT, IT products. Huh? So, and the other uh, curves, the, and the lower, lower curve is this one, the purple curve. It's, it's uh, if you have uh, sufficiency. The other one is you have more energy efficiency uh, and less uh, increase in traffic, different, diff different uh, hypotheses. And if you look at what, uh, what the industry want to, want to make, they want to have uh, seven, if you, if you hear what Microsoft and Apple want to do, they want seven billion play players online. And video games, it's the, the share of video games in energy uh, consumption in traffic is increasing very fast because uh, it's, it's heavy. Um, 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 it's heavy uh, calculating, heavy computing because it's, it's uh, worlds, digital worlds in which you, you evolve uh, on a big computers which are not always at home. The main part of computing is, the, is done by, by data centers, not on your computer. You just get a result on, the, on your computer, but the, the calculation is done on the data center. It's one way of, of uh, uh, decreasing the, the, the energy you need on your computer. It's the same for uh, a smartphone also. You, you, only a part of the calculation is done on the smartphone. The main part is done on, on the data center. This feels also, of course, the digital consumption. And, but there are many, many uh, ideas from the, the GAFA to, uh, to increase consumption. As you saw maybe already, um, Facebook want to, to uh, build a multivers. Multivers is a kind of uh, um, second life. Maybe you, are, you heard about uh, the second life, which was a, a persistent universe, uh, virtual universe. You can, it's running all the time. You can go if you want, if you can, uh, uh, go uh, escape the, the, the world, come back, go back, and so on and so on. But the world is, is still uh, uh, having its life, its own life, all the time, 124 hours a day. And this kind of multivers can uh, use a lot of uh, calculating. Just, just imagine, for same, same as for, uh, for um, some uh, companies, companies for, like, uh, the railway uh, company in France, SNCF, like many other companies, they want to have what they call the uh, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy? Twin. A twin, a digital twin. With, you have the real uh, railway network, and they want to have a digital twin, and they make some experience on the, on the digital twin before uh, changing the real uh, network. So. If you, want, uh, ver if, you, if you have a very good resolution on the digital twin with, uh, with a lot of details, it will consume a lot of energy. It's, it's, you can say it's, the, the resolution could be infinite. Just think about it. You can recreate all, all what you see around us with uh, a uh, three, 3D uh, uh, lens. 
Mm -hmm. And you can uh, you see the, this kind uh, of thing in science fiction uh, movies, yes? Mm -hmm. Multivers is a kind of uh, persistent. Uh, je sais pas si mon anglais est bon. <laughs> uh, you, you play video games a little bit, so you have a kind of universe you you can travel in, you can go in. Like uh, my son is playing to. Uh, Miner, le, le truc là. Minecraft. 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 C'est ça? Minecraft. Minecraft. This, this Minecraft. You see, you see Minecraft. You can go in a universe which is which is very big, and you can have different univers, parallel uh, universe in Minecraft. It's same kind of thing, but all the time, and uh, with, with a very high resolution. And you can you can uh, you can do trade if you want. You can uh, meet people. You can uh, do almost uh, not uh, not everything you do in real life, but uh, a lot of things. It it was existing already with uh, with Second Life, but the idea is to to do something far better with uh, with the uh, a resolution which is far far higher. And you can imagine also that in this universe you can do a lot of things you cannot do in real life. Because it's virtual, so you just imagine you you can uh, so so poss possibly the consumption of this kind of universe can, could be very very high, and there are many many applications of this type. The autonomous car, for example, the autonomous car needs a lot of of uh, computing because uh, uh, the car must see the environment detect the environment, communicate with other cars, cars communicate with each other to screen all the environment, and so on and so on. So many applications of this type to are, are in the, uh, being um, financed by, uh, by um, um, funds. I will come to this. Another example, what Intel calls volumetric video. It's a kind of filming. I don't know what's the resolution of, of the vid video today. How much uh, megaoctet you, you generate in, uh, in one minute. Maybe you know. You don't know. Uh, the volumetric video, uh, video is three teraoctet for one minute. Three teraoctet. Usually, a uh, 4K video is one giga. One film, two hours. 4K is one giga. This is one minute, three tera. So you, you get, it, because it's 3D, it's, it's, you, you need many, ca many cameras to, to film all the, uh, maybe with five, six, seven cameras, 4K, 4K cameras simultaneously to see or the, the, the room, this kind of thing. You, you can imagine, you can do, a, you can produce a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of, of, uh, of data. So what they did, I need to speak a little faster, I think, because just, uh, I want to see here also, this is better. Sorry, yeah, for that. Maybe this. Okay, that's better. It's not not perfect, but that's better. What's the digital? Just, just to summarize, uh, Norbert Wiener in the 40s uh, defines digital or digital machine as a machine that produces information in order to communi communicate and command. Information that could be an information for cognition, but could be also a command, to, to command something to... Uh, uh, automa uh, for automatization. So uh, there are a lot of uh, pub publications on the digital as new public space, such as uh, in, the, in the Habermas uh, sense, Habermas meaning. Uh, what, uh, two, two famous authors, uh, McLuhan and Elizabeth Eisenstein, and most of the time, digitalization is compared to Gutenberg revolution, of the print revolution which is not uh, false, it's, it's a part of, of, uh, of this digitalization, but digitalization is also a kind of uh, new way of uh, industrializing 
with uh, industrializing all the uh, value chains in global value chains. So it's, it's a kind of log logistic revolution, not only a print revolution, it's a logistical revolution. That's why Amazon is uh, it's, it's not uh, only e-commerce. It's a new way of doing logis logistics. And it's changing not everything, but it's changing a lot in the logistics sector because uh, Amazon uh, is very strong on, on the following of the, on the packets from the start to the end, especially at the end. The final kilometers, as say, uh, the logistician says, which is the most difficult to, to master. And the, the uh, Leonard Kleinrock, which was the um, creator of internet, uh, theoretically speaking, he, he, wa he, has, he has in mind, he had in mind, uh, uh, the, the, the main idea was to apply to information the model of logistics. That's why if you have Linux, I have Linux, I don't, I don't uh, download uh, um, softwares. There's no software on Linux. There are packets. Packets. And a software is made of a lot of packets. One pa it's, it's like you, when you go to IKEA, a software is the bed, but it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, you, when you, you, you buy it, it's, it's in packets. So when it's sent, each packet is going in one train, is in one track, and at the end, it's a bed in your, uh, in your house. It's, internet is working same, in the same way. Maybe you remember that around 2000, two ta the, the year 2000, there was uh, the internet bubble, and the internet bubble was about portals. The industry of contents, like Disney, they are the Walt Disney Company, or uh, Vivendi, or uh, industry of contents. They see the internet as a, a kind of new television. The new television it will be the computer, multimedia computer, and uh, the, the, the goal for everybody is to, at this time, was to, to, to master the entry in the consumer space through the computer. But uh, that was uh, only a partial vision of what happens because uh, the screens you see, there's not only one screen, one screen the computer multimedia at home, but many screens on the telephones, on the, this kind of computer, tablets, many outside in the, in the street, everywhere, you could, you, you, you could have screens, screens everywhere. So it's not only about multimedia. That's the first point. Second point, uh, as you can see on the global value of uh, IT ecosystem, uh, digital ecosystem, this is the evolution of the global value of uh, the IT ecosystem. Content is about uh, maybe 10, 10, 12 percent only. What, what is the rest about? It's, it's about transmitting the content, of course, networking the content, but also about industry, command, global value chain processing. Uh, you can see, for example, you can, for example, uh, uh, you can take the example of, uh, you know, the fast fashion Zara, this shop Zara for, uh, for uh, um, fashion. Uh, Zara, when you buy one uh, T-shirt, for example, at the same time, the main headquarters of Zara in Spain, they know that you, you bought one T-shirt. They know immediately. They have the statistic in real time, and they change the fashion every week. That's fast fashion. It's not possible without IT. Not possible. They can manage global value chain, which means global logistics, of course. To, uh, to uh, renew t-shirts, and to, to make it, and to send it, and to put it everywhere in the shops. You see? The logistics, 
um, uh, complication. <laughs> She's a kind of a <laughs> very big uh, uh, challenge. And there is a lot of money in, uh, for this, uh, this kind of application of in the IT. Maybe you, you checked uh, already, you have courses on uh, agriculture and you, you discovered there's no money on the agriculture. Uh, no mo no, not a lot of money on uh, um, uh, housing uh, decrease, uh, energy de decrease. Uh, not so much, no, no money for uh, hospitals in France. No money, no money, but a lot, a lot of money for IT. There's a lot of funds, they, want, they, they agree to, to give a lot of money for, and if the money is there, then the solution is coming because there is a lot of persuasion, a lot of money to make it happen. And it happens very fast. This is the first uh, report of uh, um, UN uh, um, conference on, on trade. First report on the digitalization of the economy. You see 2009, 2009 that's the world, world's top 20 companies 20 companies by market capitalization by, by sector. In 2009, you see it was oil and gas, which seems uh, logical. <laughs> and now it's technology and consumer services, which is mainly IT companies. Maybe you saw already that uh, Tesla, the capitalization, capitalization of Tesla is more than all the other automotive industry together, which is crazy. <laughs> which is crazy, <laughs> because they are not making a lot of, uh, they, have not, they have not a lot, a big share of the market. They have a small share. But the, the people who give money, they think they will get a large share in the future. Because contrary to what we heard, what we hear very often about uh, finance, finance is also thinking long term, not only short term, but it's not the long term we want. <laughs> But it's the, it's the long term they see and they want to happen. So the growth, uh, if you understand uh, digitalization as a, a logistic challenge, then you understand why it's talking about platforms. Platform is a world also coming from the logistic world. Platform is a place when you, you put packets and somebody else is coming to pick up packets. So it's this big uh, um, uh, entrepot, uh, big uh, warehouses, warehouses at, at peripheral to city. Typical Amazon uh, warehouses, typical. But there are many others. You can see supermarket also. It's a kind of warehouse. Gorillas. You, you phone, you, have, uh, you, you command, and you have what you want in 10 minutes, or sh I, don't, uh, I don't remember. Very short, quick, it's very quick. And they have ghost warehouses in, uh, in city, uh, behind uh, the, the walls, and uh, they, can, they could go very fast. It's the same, same logistics. And uh, more and more, the digital is inserted in every in inserted in every choice architecture, which means that whatever you want to do, the easiest solution is to use IT, to eat IT, to phone IT, visio, to learn IT, and so on and so on. To you want to take a transport IT, and so on and so on. And more and more, it's difficult to to uh, escape IT choice because uh, the alternatives are decreasing. Maybe you've heard that in Paris, uh, the mayor, Anne Hidalgo, wanted to, to um, remove the, the panels, les, les panneaux d'indication, signalisation, uh, traffic signs, yes. Uh, in, real, in real life traffic signs, because she said, everybody has a smartphone, so why do you need uh, these traffic signs? <laughs> this kind of thing. Hmm? And the global picture behind this is the same. This is uh, um, a graph uh, or presentation coming from uh, the Federal Reserve of Dallas. 
it's always the same, the uh, capitalism perpetual motion machine with uh, innovation, new and better products, more productivity, increased consumption, increased production, and so on, and so on. The, the picture behind is the, it re, uh, remains the same, of course. There is this technological change, but there is no ideological change. And, of course, there are uh, the winners and the losers in, uh, in real life. Not, not everybody is uh, in the startup nation. And uh, this is, this is uh, a representation of where is the value added, added value in France, in, in metropoles. And uh, on the right, you have the, the vote in uh, the last uh, president, uh, presidential election. In purple, it's where the people vote uh, more for the liberal uh, president, current president, which is Emmanuel Macron. And in, in brown, it's where the people, French people, uh, vote for the opponents to, to liberal, uh, liberal wing, liberal uh, party. And it's very clear that uh, purple is near the, it's in the metropoles, and out the metropoles, it's, it's brown. To be to to go a little bit more into details, I don't want to be too long because the uh, time is r is running. But there are four main types of actors: public authorities, companies, consumers, and, and NGO. Uh, uh, in front of uh, confronting the the challenge of of uh, the both uh, 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 digital transition, so-called digital transition and ecological transition, or uh, uh, yes, ecological transition, public authorities, on, on one side, they push digitalization, globalization of, of value chain, uh, the, the change of the position of the, of the country in, uh, in the global value chain to, to keep the value added. For example, France was uh, producing uh, almost what uh, French people you, uh, I, uh, were using in the 15, uh, 50s, 60s, 1960s, more or less. And now, in France, we, more or less, the country is designing things, is consuming things, but is not producing things. It's produced uh, in China or uh, uh, somewhere else. So they push digitalization and they push, they put, uh, uh, they also uh, adopt some rules that limit externalities. There are three main directives in, uh, in uh, it's coming from the, from the EU. First directive is a energy using product directive, which no, the, the, no, the name now is eco design because it's not only on energy, but it's also on uh, materials to, to try to go to a circular economy. And uh, the, the, the design of the directive is, uh, is uh, the following. They, uh, they take uh, an IT product, for example, this, this kind of computer, and they try to push the, the best available techniques, the best, best available technologies. That's more or less the, the, the idea. So they try to ban all the inefficient technologies. Same for... Uh, all the electric uh, products, e electric and electronic products in general, energy using product in general, electricity, uh, uh, more focused on electricity. That's first directive. The second directive is more on waste. We, uh, both of them, they were uh, voted at uh, around 2002. No, it's, it's not quite new, it has been renewed, yeah, renewed year, year after year, but it has now almost 20 years, they are 20 years old. So the WE directive, which is uh, waste uh, of electric, uh, uh, electrical products, electric and electronic uh, um, equipment, and they really uh, they rely on five principles, one to one, that means that if you buy a new product to a shop, you can bring the old product to, to the same shop. It seems, seems uh, simple now, but it means that uh, for the shop, it's not only lo uh, uh, down logistic, I buy, I sell, it's also I take 
and I, uh, it's reverse logistics. <laughs> you, you understand? It's, 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 a, it's a big change for, uh, for many actors who were uh, used only to sail, not, not to take back in mass. Um, there is an enlarged responsibility of the producer. That means that this is a Dell, uh, Dell computer from uh, my uh, uh, institution. That means that if this computer is found in the nature without being adequately treated, it's Dell's fault, Dell's responsibility. This is enlarged responsibility of the producer. Seems a good idea. Of course, Dells don't know how to, to uh, dismantle this computer. They don't know how to treat it. So they, they, they can uh, uh, mandate an eco-organism which will do the work. An eco-organism, uh, they, could, they could be mutualized with other producers like Apple or uh, uh, any producer of, of uh, IT products. There is an enlarged responsibility of the consumer also. You should bring back your, uh, your computer, not throw it in, into nature, in the nature. And there are quantified targets of, of collection. The third directive is more on toxics. The, it's about uh, restriction of hazardous substance. This is for public authorities. So you see it's more, it's more on efficiency. It's not about Sufficiency, I will explain later. Companies, I already uh, say something about them. Just now, if, if I compare the situation, uh, how the situation is today compared to the situation in 2007 or 8, 2007 and 8, they were opposing the directives, the European directives. They said it's too complicated, it's not good for competitiveness, it's, and so on and so on. Now they support directives. 2008, they were supporting voluntary schemes only, no regulation. Now they are supporting regulation and they are opposing voluntary schemes. Because they, they understand that uh, uh, First, this kind of regulation, uh, now you, you find it in the US, you find it in, in China, you find it in India. So uh, the, the, the regulation is coming everywhere in, the, in every part of the world. So you have to do like this everywhere. So there's no choice anymore. And vol voluntary schemes, it's, it, now they see it, uh, it's, it's for cheaters. <laughs> and they don't want cheaters. They want to, to control the market to have a safe operating space, a regulating space. It's always the same for companies. They, di they dislike uh, uncertainty. Oops. So companies, they are more on energy efficiency, circular economy, and renewables, but they are not on sufficiency, of course. Uh, there are some, uh, I call it Inge actor, but I don't know if it's good translation. So they are small, but they, they, have, they could have a big effect. It's, it's, or lev, level actor, I don't know to translate it. Uh, actor charnier in French. Uh, but, uh, also, they push efficiency, renewables, and more rarely sufficiency. And consumers, all the other actors speak about in the name of consumers, but consumers themselves, they are uh, very numerous, different, um, they are not very aware of, of the issue. Uh, okay. Has the consumer a choice? More or less, no. If you look at the, um, uh, what uh, says the consumer, they say we rely more and more, we are dependent more and more on IT, no choice, more and more. So uh, access to IT is more and more um, needed to, to participate in society. Basic needs, they go through IT now. If you want to satisfy basic needs, it's like a car in uh, some uh, part of the country. If you don't have any car, you don't eat, you, you don't work, you, you don't learn, you, you don't live. So, sufficiency, I go fast. Sufficiency, <coughs> so this, okay, just here. <laughs> sufficiency, 
commonly speaking, efficacy is, is, if you, is the propension to reach a goal. If you don't reach the goal, you are not uh, efficace. I don't know if you uh, if I can say like this. Effective, effective, you are not effective. If, if the goal is reached with an economy of means, you can, you can reach the goal with a lot of means, with not very efficient. With uh, uh, an economy of means, you are efficient. This is the common speaking language. Huh? But in our state schemes, it's a different, it's a little bit different. Efficacy could mean an increase of production thanks to innovation. When, when the economy is more uh, efficace, then it produces more. Resources are best allowed to increase production. But uh, efficacy means also, that's the problem, a decrease of resource and pollution in order to, prosu to produce or consume a good or, or a service. For example, I'm talking with you. I'm using a video, uh, PC. Maybe I can do it with less energy or less material, maybe. And if it's the case, efficacy will be increased. You understand? But sufficiency is something else. Sufficiency is, do I need the computer? Do I need the video? That's sufficiency. OK. More complex, what sufficiency is at one level, or seems to be at one level, could, could be only efficacy at another level. For example, I just give an example. At the level of a data center, you check how your data center is organized. For example, there is bad insulation. You improve the insulation. You decrease the energy bill. You get some money, and with the money, you go running motocross in the weekend. And uh, the final result is, uh, is uh, not so good as, as before. <laughs> you would better not insulate your, uh, your data center and not do the motocross. You understand the, the idea? So there is a link between sufficiency and efficacy, which is not so simple. I just want to, to underline this. To finish with, uh, I translate uh, myself. I don't know if it's good, huh? because uh, the, it's, it doesn't match with French, uh, French uh, vocabulary. There is four dis distinctions to, to make, to understand. L life modes. It's repetitive uses. For example, if you go to the, in the metro in Paris between 6 a.m. 6 and 7 a.m., you see it's uh, manual work workers, not intellectual workers, not uh, employers, employees. Okay? If you go between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., it's employees. You see it every morning, repetitively. And it has, of course, energy implication. For example, in France, maybe somewhere else it's the same. When, when people come back at house, at home, uh, at the end of the day, at, uh, around 7 p.m., there is an increase in e electricity demand for, for uh, um, uh, the chauffage, <laughs> heating the houses. This is repetitive, you see? Not everybody, but a lot of people. Lifestyle is more about indiv individual variations. I take the metro with, for example, with the employees, but not exactly at the same time. I have my own uh, um, uh, uh, journey and so on and so on. It's individual variation of low amplitude. Innovators, uh, it's not exactly the name, but anyway, it's a uh, um, repetitive minority which want to change life modes. For example, I use the bicycle, but to, ch to, 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 change, to try to change life modes, I have also to oppose or try to, to change the way the other um, um, uh, be behave, you understand? To fight cars, for example. And finally, to gain some place, some room on the streets against the cars, against the cars. This is innovators, but you have in mind that innovators could be also pushed by companies. Apple fans, 
For example, they want to convert everybody to Apple using. And the company knows very well they are Apple, Apple fans. The Apple company, they have billions, millions, not billions, millions uh, of dollars to, to, uh, uh, to uh, encourage, I can say, these, these followers to make them do what they want. They are kind of, they are kind of ambassador of, of the, the brand in the, in the society. That's the way they, 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 they try to change the life, uh, the mode, uh, life modes of other people. People who have uh, Dell, <laughs> for example, or no computer at all. And there is the system which is the capitalist system. So just to finish this, I finish on this. So, just to, to understand that what, what are uh, life uh, modes, lifestyles, uh, how, it ch how it changes. Um, um, in economy, there are uh, network goods, which most of the time are only about networks. For example, when you have a telephone, when you are alone to have a telephone, it's, done, it's not very useless, useful. You, you, you telephone to nobody. So the telephone is as, as useful as there is many people who have a telephone. The more you have telephone in circulation, the more it is useful. You understand? But we can, observe, we can observe that many goods are like this. The more you have cars, the more you have roads, the more you produce cars in big numbers, the, more, the less the cost of the car is, and so on and so on. So, so the more the car, the, the more are the, uh, there are the cars, the more the car is useful. It's transforming urbanization and so on. You see, many, many goods are network goods in reality. And there is uh, the, the evolution of uh, the diffusion of a network good is very different from a non-network good. Because at the beginning, nobody wants to buy a telephone which is useless. Understand? So you have uh, a good idea, uh, a new technique, a new product, but it is useless until a lot of people have already the kind of a chicken and egg problem. You see? And it's the same for bicycles versus cars. You can see it's logistic problem. You can see it on the picture here. On the right, everybody has a, has a, has a bicycle, so if you have a car, you have many trouble. And on the left, everybody has a car, so if you have a bicycle, you have many, many problems. So this is how uh, way, way of life, modes of life are changing. It's network, network, network effects. Just want to push this, this idea. Uh, okay, finished. No? <laughs> because you want, uh, I want, I have to. Uh, <laughs> okay, just to conclude. Uh, so, if you want to to change modes of life, there is a first phase. A first phase. You need a long and low productive investment, and it's the same for uh, political parties, for uh, uh, social movement. You have a new idea which is very important, but. A lot of people uh, want to see what the others are thinking. <laughs> so everybody wants to see everybody, if it's good or not, so nobody decides nothing. <laughs> you, you understand? So a low, long and low productive investment. There is a cyclist. I was in, uh, cycling in Paris at the end of the 90s. I was, uh, we were not numerous. <laughs> so you have to be heroic because uh, the, the car, they don't like cyclists. And after more and more and more cy uh, cyclists, now, now there are a lot of uh, cyclists, no, no, now no problem. And the evolution is not, is not uh, uh, like this, linear. There is a, a threshold effect. Some events, for example, in Paris, it was the virus. Some events made 
uh, high attractivity for something, the bicycle. Not only, huh? visual, visual conference also. But uh, in Paris, there was the Corona Piste, Corona Roads, it's the name in Paris of, of this, uh, this uh, cycle path, Corona Path for, for cycling, which appear uh, from one day to another with many cyclists which were not cyclists the, the day before. You see? It's, it's something like that. A threshold. Then another threshold. And at, at the end, there is a saturation again and a new lock-in, because it's always about lock-in. Lock-in is not, it's not, it's not a tragedy. The problem is what lock-in you have. Is it good for you or is, not, is it bad for you? That's, that's the problem. Lock-in is not a problem per se. Hmm? OK. Thank you very much. <laughs>
because the new activity created directly or indirectly through the multiplier effect creates an increase in energy consumption, uh, we could say that it has a positive effect, but again, it's not so straightforward. Uh, I put the case here of uh, the BD on demand sector in the US in 2020, which is calculated to have a market revenue of $20 billion, uh, which is a big increase. But in this case, we could say this is not a substitute. Uh, this is a substitute of a sector that previously existed and it's just not built on top of the existing economy. So when we take into account the previously existing sector, for instance, the US video rental and sale revenue uh, 20 years ago in 1999, we could see that the market value is actually high, higher. So in this case, digitalization is a kind of clear ca a case of uh, what we could call in Schumpeterian terms, creative destruction, because it actually seems to have destroyed monetary value, not so much social value, but monetary value. Plus, uh, now the money is more concentrated, so this may further reduce consumption. So again, this is an effect that should be positive, that should increase energy consumption, but it's not so clear. And last, and I would say least in this case, digitalization is also expected to imply some sort of sectoral change, as in some form of uh, tertiarization which should reduce the overall consumption because the service sector is 10 times less energy intensive than manufacturing. But again, we have some uncertainties here. First, because we don't know if uh, ICT is replacing or is just built on top of existing manufacturing sector. And second, because if we don't know, even if it's replacing this manufacturing sector, we don't know if this manufacturing activity is disappearing or is just moving somewhere else in East Asia where it's all manufactured. So um, the conclusions of the paper could be that in the end, we can see how, even though this was the initial idea, all the effects have contradictory inner forces that make it hard to assess their true nature. But what is clear is that we can hardly say that digitalization implies a reduction in energy consumption and that digitalization can have an absolute decoupling and become green IT. And at the same time, it's unlikely that this is possible to achieve somehow because all these effects uh, are interrelated. So we cannot just uh, push a lot for increasing efficiency and sectoral change because if we increase the efficiency of the economy, this is also going to boost uh, the GDP growth, which in the end is going to increase energy consumption. So the idea that digitalization can be absolutely decoupled from energy consumption or green IT seems unrealistic. This was uh, the summary of the paper so far. Now, before moving on to other literature on the issue, we would like to put uh, two critiques or reminders or uh, ideas around the paper to contextualize it. One, the first more in favor, so to speak, of digitalization, which uh, is the idea that monetary value is not the same as social value. Because when we talk about decoupling, we tend to use GDP, which is a monetary value, and this might be misleading. First, because it neglects the value created by all that is digital, but it's not marketed like uh, Wikipedia or communities like Reddit. This is not taken into account when we just talk about the GDP. Second, because it's also hard to uh, value flat rated services. We saw it with the example of Netflix. The social value is probably higher than the economic value. And last, because the value of digital goods and services doesn't hold well across, across time. So uh, I don't know, the chair I'm sitting on, if I put it in a, in a wardrobe and I save it there for 10 years, it probably will have the same value in 10, in 10 years because chairs don't, cha don't change much. But the laptop or the phone I have, if I put them on a box in 10 years and I open it again, in 10 years, it's probably gonna have a much lower value because there's a lot of depreciation going on in, in technological devices because of the innovation. So as a conclusion, we must accept both that digitalization cannot decouple from energy consumption. And at the same time, the digitalization's value is not just economic marketed value. So when we uh, talk about reducing digitalization, we must uh, acknowledge that we're not only giving up on the economic value, but also on other stuff. And finally, a second idea, this one more against digitalization is the idea that 
the greatest and most unavoidable impact of digitalization is not so much the energetic impact, but the material impact impact because we can switch all the energy production to fully renewable energy and avoid the impact on climate change but we cannot recycle all the hardware production that is demanded and actually this is something that is uh, i could say precisely exacerbated by kumi and moore laws because uh, as the constant increase in efficiency effectively means that to implement this new efficiency in the electronic devices we must constantly remanufacture them and we must constantly remanufacture the whole infrastructure uh, sustaining the internet. So the, there is a trade-off here, uh, environmental trade-off between energy intensity and resources for manufacturing that we cannot escape and that Corhan is going to address now in another slide. Uh, thanks, Professor Filippo, for your talk and thanks, Yerai. Um, I'd like to start my part of the presentation with a recommendation. This is a report published in 2019, uh, which discusses the limitations of arguments around uh, absolute decoupling or decoupling in general. And it lays out these seven barriers to green growth understanding, which is uh, based on the idea that we can indeed uh, maintaining economic growth uh, at the same time reducing our material and energy consumption. Um, now, some of these issues were already addressed in the paper, uh, but perhaps, for my understanding, one of the biggest limitations when it comes to absolute decoupling or decoupling argument in general is the fact that it creates a geographical illusion. Uh, now, this is more of a problem with methodological approaches that we've seen in the papers, uh, uh, and it leads to uh, failure in understanding that a decoupling in one region often hides recoupling in somewhere else, um, and most studies that ignore, uh, that, that um, tend to argue for the possibility of absolute decoupling tend to ignore this, uh, taking into account the fact that now material production is actually taking place in another geographic area. Uh, and indeed, there's so many studies that show relative decoupling is now happening in, in the most, uh, in the global north, relative decoupling meaning that we're growing, but it, uh, and this growth rate is way higher than uh, increase in the material and energy consumption and this is certainly the case but the problem is that the only reason for that is not more that is not that we're more efficient efficient in terms of energy use but also the fact that now most of the material production that is quite energy intensive is taking pla place in the global south um, one study for example um, by Kovacic et al in 2018 uh, show the, shows that financialization, which is characterized by the expanding service sector in the global north, develop, in developed economies, uh, and also um, outsourcing of production to other regions, is actually the primary reason why we're observing this relative decoupling in, in, in EU 14 countries. Uh, another study by Shore and Jorgensen draws a similar conclusion by also saying that the opposite of this is now actually happening in uh, global south, which is recoupling, uh, as in GDP, the relationship between GDP and emission is actually getting stronger. Uh, and one more study that specifically looked at Switzerland uh, shows um, observed decrease in the energy intensity in Switzerland is actually compensated uh, by the energy embodied in imported products. So when you look at it uh, from a bigger picture, between the years 2000 and 2014, you see that energy intensity is actually, uh, has actually stayed the same. So we can't really talk about overall uh, reduction in the energy intensity. Uh, now, you may want to take a look at these studies. Uh, I think they're quite useful to uh, go a bit into detail with the arguments uh, of decoupling. And you might as well take a look at one of the paper we wrote with Peter uh, for our finance and ecological transition course. We touched upon some of those limitations uh, from a degrowth perspective. Uh, and we're happy to share it with you. Um, okay, now speaking of degrowth, um, I think the paper makes it one thing really clear, um, that we need a new approach towards sufficiency in the ICT sector. Why? We have all these energy reducing effects of digitalization, which trigger uh, at the same time energy increasing effects. So unless coupled with certain understanding of sufficiency, efficiency alone is not getting us anywhere. Um, and this 
understanding of sufficiency has been a central element in degrowth thinking, right? As you, as many of you have already known, I think. Um, I'm quoting De Maria here. Uh, the degrowth vision is not one of restriction, but rather of sufficiency, living with enough for having a good life, and not more for the sake of more. Uh, so keeping all this in mind, what I did was trying to find something that shows post-growth understanding of how technology should look like. Um, especially when we put the idea of uh, sufficiency at the center of question. Uh, apparently there's not much uh, empirical work in this field, which is quite understandable. But nevertheless, we have some useful uh, frameworks, I think, that remain to be experimented. Uh, and one of these frameworks is um, convivial technology. Um, and here we have the matrix for it, um, to basically to assess if, if the technology that you're considering to produce or, or that has been used in certain areas is um, what, kind of what kind of effects it creates, uh, what are the different impacts within different stages. Uh, so I find it quite useful. For example, uh, when we look at it in more detail, it consists of five different uh, dimensions for every stage, stages that we can think of when we think about a certain technology or a certain product. Uh, we have materials extraction, we have production, we have use, its operation, and the infrastructure needed for its operation. Um, and these five dimensions, for example, relatedness uh, asks the question, what does it bring about between people? Uh, does it contribute to human capability? Uh, does it enhance people's ability to relate to others or not? Access asks who can produce and use it where and how. Um, adaptability questions how independent or linkable it is to already existing technologies. Uh, Bio-interaction questions uh, does it actually contribute to regeneration of the ecosystem systems or is it just something neutral that's standing there. Um, and finally appropriateness asks uh, what is the relationship between the input and output but considering the context, right? whether in that specific context, that specific technology is needed or not. Does it really make sense to have that technology? Um, well, I found this matrix quite interesting in the sense that it also comes with quite strong necessity of making strong value judgments at the same time. Because when you look at, for example, I don't know if you're able to see it, uh, but when we look at the use uh, category for relatedness, for example, it asks whether the technology creates beauty, creates art, um, I found these, I mean, these are hard things to measure, but still this enables us to think of uh, what other things we can think about when we remove, when, when, when we rule out uh, the main, under, main concerns uh, such as economic returns, such as efficiency. I think it shows, uh, it can be considered as a good alternative to think about in a broader sense for a technology. Uh, and finally, um, I do believe that we, we need to have more political discussions about ex-novation, as in we need to discuss um, the problematic innovations that have already proven to be um, not contributing to neither well-being nor em environmental conditions. And this, these discussions have to be similar to the ones that we're having now about fossil fuel industry, uh, environmentally harmful sectors. Um, I don't know, I mean, you, 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 you might have heard about this, uh, but the EU is now uh, planning to establish a common uh, charging solution for all devices in the EU, which is already opposed by Apple and so many others. Um, well, the idea is to um, counteract the electronic waste because of all those different types of cables we're using to charge our devices, so we can at least like standardize it. Um, of course, to what extent this is going to be uh, this is going to turn out to be a really uh, good policy direction to solve these issues, but I think it shows very very accurately an in institutionally imposed ex innovation and maybe perhaps it's a good start to broaden the discussion about how do we approach these issues uh, policy wise um, and finally, as always, we have some questions to you, Professor Filippo. Uh, uh, the first question is, what do you think is the most urgently needed regulation for the ICT and why? 
Uh, second question is, how do you relate the concept of digital sufficiency with degrowth approaches, uh, to be more specific about your standpoint um, in terms of degrowth approaches? Um, and finally, considering the disproportionate share of internet traffic in video on demand, would it be sensible to retake all demand from internet service providers so that Netflix and other intense bandwidth consumers pay a toll to use their networks? Thank you very much. Il y a des fils partout là. Okay, okay. I have a proposal of a regulation proposal. So what what you showed on the USB C is typically. Uh, um, a result of EUP directive, eco-design directive, is one small part of this very big directive, which is regulating uh, every uh, electricity using products, with a lot, a lot of products. <laughs> My proposal is that to request, it's mandatory, that every company and state, that was my, my last slide I didn't share with you, to calculate the social ecological trajectory they want to produce with, network, with this network effect when they launch a good or a low. That is, you, you, I show you uh, the, 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 um, the shift project uh, study. They do scenarios, they calculate the future, they calculate different trajectories with different hypotheses. Just do that before commercializing, not after. And you share the information with, with all the consumers, the NGO. For example, if Samsung want to launch the 5G uh, 8K uh, smartphone, 8K smartphone, it's already, you can buy it. Then before launching the products. They do, same, they do the same kind of study which the shift project has done, which is very simple to do because shift project with a small means, they, they small money, they, they can do it. So for Samsung, it's really easy. You know the trajectory you want to, to produce because you know how, how many phones you want to sell. You, you don't want to, want to sell only one, one phone. You don't, do, you don't make a new phone for selling on, only one phone. So maybe you want to sell, I don't know, 400 million telephones. You, you, you imagine some, some case study on uh, uses. You, you have a telephone with, with 8K, it's, it's to use it. You have 5G, it's to use it. So you calculate the trajectory. You get the results before commercializing the the, the product, and I guess it will be hard to sell, <laughs> I guess. But you see, you, you inform the public debate. Because this kind of, this kind of, uh, of debate on USB-C, nobody knows in the general opinion. It's very technical. Only NGOs and a happy few know what's going on. It's not enough to, to give the people, in general, the uh, uh, um, uh, information about what's going on, about the stakes. That's, that's my answer. Of course, digital sufficiency is linked to degrowth because digital uh, ex expansion is linked to growth. That's, that's the link. Just want to add that on what you said on the previous uh, speaker said that it's hard, you said it's hard to quantify rebound effect. It's, it's true because it's, as I showed, I tried to show you with the network effect and, and the transformation of uh, life modes, it's not uh, the, 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 the things you do after uh, generalizing this type or type the, of, techni of techniques is different than before, it's different. So it's, it's not, for example, you are, you are not doing the same thing when you speak like this or when you do a video conference. You are not doing the same thing. 
it's not a simple substitution. So, uh, because the rebound effect, uh, to, to, to measure it, to, me to, to take an adequate measure, you have to find examples in which there is a substitution. There is uh, almost never a substitution. It's a transformation. That's, that's why it's difficult to, to measure. Because, but what is, what is easy to measure is the global output. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? That's easy to measure. And it's by this way of the, the looking at the problem globally, then you understand what's going on. If you look at only at, uh, at the individual level on the case study, you see nothing. Or you, it's very hard to see. So it's, it, this, 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 kind, this uh, discussion about the measure of rebound effect is a kind of dead, dead end discussion uh, without a clear answer, never. To retake all demand, Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire Faut mettre un péage C'est ça l'idée Yeah. Ah. Ok. Well, I have to think about it. Uh, at least you can ask Netflix to, to stay in uh, low resolution. To, to, that's easy to, to, to vote. For key, streaming is forbidden. That's all. Easy. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> You can, you can see the film uh, in, uh, in HD also. Uh, I have a television, uh, normal television. If, if you have a two square, two, two square meter television, yes, okay, that's a problem. <laughs> Would we see people on the streets the next day? Would we see people on the street the next day? Right huh? after this, if you have the menu, if you have the menu. Do you think there's more than that? Anyway, that's... that's uh, Maybe it's easier, or or, uh, or you can say that uh, same as for water, in some countries, it's free from the the on the basic needs. Yeah. Then it's a little bit costly for more, and it's more 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 costly if you want 4K, and it's very very costly if you have 8K. I don't, I don't understand with the, the mask, I mean, with the mask. Once you, once you do that, then the rich will keep enjoying the 40 streaming, and then the poor is just still like yeah, That's why it's, uh, it's yeah, not it's so easy to answer. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I just want to add two things. First, on quantum computing, because he, you, uh, the former speakers, speaker spoke about quantum computing. Quantum computing is very, very big machine, like ENIAC in 1945. So going from that machine to the quantum compu computing to that, that scale, it will take some decades just to... So main infrastructure will remain with this kind of computing for a long time, a very long time. And that's, that's what the... Comp quantum computing promoters thi think, it's not, it's not me, they think their share of the market is like the big coin, only for big thing, <laughs> it's a big note. And the other point was about the well, small point, but more, more slow to decrease, to decrease the, the energy consumption of the chip you need to increase the energy to, to uh, build the chip. You see? Because and you need more and more materials to maintain the law of more. More and more different materials. So it's more and more complex. There is three, four, five times more operation now to do one chip than before. I have the slide to, to show this, but Today's what's a very short presentation. <laughs>